Are you trying to access capital by monetizing a standby letter of credit or a bank guarantee or a medium term note of some kind? In this video, I'm going to tell you the three biggest challenges that we saw our customers face this year and how we went to solve them. You've got to watch this video. Tim Rizami from Lanacred.ai, and my organization is a world-class leader at monetizing banking instruments, standard of credit, documenters of credit, medium term notes, like that. We also help clients access funding through a program called uh, Rent to Rich Uncle, where they get access to far more capital than their banks would be able to provide them or brokers would. We offer various in, in the capital in various different countries and jurisdictions, as well as help companies participate in safe private placement programs that actually pay out money. You know, first of all, I want to tell you in this video, I'm not going to give you any legal advice, tax advice, investment advice. The intention of this video is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you may want to do so right now. We offer a lot of strategies on banking, closing procedures in banking, how to mirror funds from one country to another, monetize banking instruments, how to access various forms of lines of credit, how to monetize hard assets, liquidate them, like that. And so you'll benefit a lot from some of our insights, customer case studies, testimonials, and so on. You know, so when it comes to accessing capital, the truth is that banks have been tough to work with, but they're also getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And a lot of entrepreneurs need access to a lot more capital, whether it's for real estate, whether it's to start a business, fund a growing business, like that. And often, some portion of entrepreneurs find or, or somehow fall into this whole industry called the credit swap market, where all of a sudden they get exposed to banking instruments they've never heard of before, like standby letters of credit, medium term notes, DLCs, documentary of credit, like that. And uh, they somehow come across a joker broker who says if you pay for the wiring fees of an instrument, you're gonna get this $100 million instrument and you're gonna get a $500 million instrument only if you monetize that would you become the richest entrepreneur on the planet? Some version of something like that. And so given how hard it is for businesses to access capital, somehow this credit swap market that they've never been exposed to before is what a lot of entrepreneurs all of a sudden start getting into. And uh, in this video, I wanna share with you some horror stories, some nightmares uh, that our clients call to tell us, Tamar, lot of credit, man, do I have this instrument stuck and you've got to help me out. So I'm gonna give you the top three uh, that uh, are common. So the first one is, um, uh, I'm gonna give you case studies and stories. So it's a couple uh, that uh, they're um, uh, a, a former family member passed away. Uh, one of the members of the couple inherited a lot of cash and they put up some money and they went to uh, lease an instrument. Uh, a $500 million instrument got issued. The beneficiary is the client and the bank that is the receiving bank is a bank in Germany. And so all of a sudden, imagine an American couple, they've got this $500 million instrument in a bank in Germany in their name and they're, and they're stuck and they don't know what to do with it and that was the uh, the 911 call they made to us is you have to help us out, figure figure this out. So uh, the, the the first challenge in this particular case is the bank in Germany never has never doesn't have a client with, with their name on it. So this is an American couple, American run business out of the United States. Their bank is America, and whoever who issued the instrument issued it to the German bank, and the German bank just doesn't have these guys as a client. So that's part one. So when the client has the instrument being issued to a bank where they don't have an account in, you could see, especially if it's a $500 million standard of credit, um, that standard of credit is stuck like that. So uh, the first thing to do if that ever happens to you is to contact the bank, whoever bank that your bank is stuck on, and don't call retail banking. 
retail banking to go and tell a teller, hey, I have $100 million, $500 million, $800 million instrument stuck in your bank. Uh, it's like talking uh, a very different language to somebody who's in retail banking. Oftentimes, who you want to talk to is a credit department. Uh, so that's the people you want to talk to and you want to say, hey, I'm a client of the bank. Uh, this instrument stuck and what can you do to help me unstuck him? So that's the first thing that I would do. Uh, the second thing I would do is I would call the issuer and have them reissue the instrument, but this time around to make sure that the bank they're issuing it to is your bank, whoever your home bank is. And before the home bank receives it, if I were to be contacting the home bank, I'll be contacting the AML document, uh, AML anti money laundry department. I'll be talking to my branch manager. I'll be talk, calling to everybody I need to talk to to let them know that you're going to be receiving instrument and what the source of the funds are. This is so that when you receive the instrument, the instrument doesn't get stuck in your home bank. Now, the reason that a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck on their reissuing of the instrument is because when the reissuer wants to, when the issuer wants to reissue the instrument, the client has to repay for the wiring fees. And if there's a hundred million dollar SBLC or five hundred million dollar SBLC, whatever the amount of the instrument is, oftentimes entrepreneurs don't have that money saved up, and it becomes really tough to uh, release a, a credit line to them or uh, get an instrument reissued to them when they don't have the money. The challenge with going and going, you may say, hey, Tamar, let's, let the entrepreneur go get an investor, a private investor, or go to a bank or somebody and get a line of credit for the fee, for the wiring fee, which could be in hundred, which could be a couple of million dollars. Well, why don't you, they do that? The problem in doing that is that the instrument is the name of the client. So if I was a private investor, in, in this case, I'm a private, uh, a private equity firm, I'm not going to be paying for the wiring fees of a client because the name of the name on the instrument is their name. Once they get that cash, that couple, the family can disappear. So why on earth would I be paying for their wiring fees? So that's one challenge that a lot of people have uh, when they need to reissue the instrument. Another challenge if when you want to reissue the instrument is the banking that is issuing the instrument will say, can you show me proof of funds that you actually have the money for the instrument we're going to reissue? Now, if you ever need to come up with proof of funds, there are lots of services in the United States where uh, lots of different organizations that offer a proof of funds service where the institution puts up the amount of money you're looking for in a certain bank in your name. However, they structure it so that that institution is the signatory. So you can't take the money out and technically, legally, they are somehow providing a proof of funds service for you, which, oh, by the way, you have to pay for. So a bottom, bottom line, if you ever get an instrument that's been stuck, um, unfortunately, you have to have figure out how to come up with money for that instrument to be reissued. If you cannot go and contact the bank that has the instrument and convince them to uh, reissue it to your home branch, whatever that looks like. So that's uh, one of the most common challenges we've seen this year. Another one is um, the client, uh, this, this has happened a few times. Uh, this is for more advanced clients. These are companies that are buying and selling instruments all in all. They could be an import exporter. They could be in the oil and gas industry. And they're just in an industry that's buying and selling instruments. And this particular client uh, bought an instrument from HSBC. And when they got the instrument, it was something called GPI manual download. And they can, they can monetize a GPI manual, uh, manual download. So first question is, why would any bank offer or issue an instrument as a GPI manual download? The answer to that is because there's something, uh, I'm going to use the wrong word, there's something weird about the source of the funds. So a source of the funds could be sovereign funds, could be heritage funds, could be uh, off-ledger funds, could be the bank doesn't even know what the source of the funds are, and that's why they issue an instrument called GPI manual download. And without going to two becoming too technical about what a GPA manual download is. It's really having two bankers in front of a computer screen, one's uploading, the other one's downloading. Uh, that, like that's the most simplest way I can describe of what a GPA manual download is. In this particular case, this is a client that's uh, um, 
I would say somewhat of an expert in buying and monetizing banking instruments every day. The challenge that they bumped into was this particular instrument was a little bit cheaper to what they buy and sell every day. And so when you buy an instrument that's a little bit cheaper, oftentimes you don't open the hood of the car to see what's underneath it. And now they got stuck with an instrument that they can monetize. Now, within LineCredit.ai, I'd like to claim or think that we are one of the fewest companies that can monetize an instrument, a, a GPI manual download. However, my obvious recommendation is go back to the issuer and ask them if they could reach you an instrument that's on the SWIFT system uh, one that you can actually monetize uh, like that. And then, uh, and, and, and my invitation is when it comes to uh, large amounts of financing, don't try to be cheap or don't try to cut corners. Um, generally speaking, I wouldn't advise to do that. Uh, next one is, uh, Tim, when we got a lease instrument, we can monetize it. And now I've done lots of videos on why you can monetize lease instruments. And in this particular case, uh, we have had clients who got a lease instrument and the instrument was not callable and it wasn't transferable. Now, if I'm leasing an instrument to you, I want you to consider I'm not, you're not the owner, keyword owner, you're not the owner of the instrument. I am the owner of the instrument. You're renting it from me if I can simplify that way. So that's why the languaging of a lease instrument is not, generally speaking, it's not callable, it's not transferable and so on. And so when a client pays for something called lease instrument, they're getting an instrument that's not monetizable. Once again, um, what I'd like to ask you to consider is to make sure you always have the money for something called fresh cut instrument where you actually own the instrument rather than trying to lease the instrument because it just becomes way too complicated to figure out even how to do that. Um, those are the three most common case studies we've seen. Now, I want to give you a flip side of it, where issuing an instrument could, uh, keywords, could be part of a solution. Uh, the truth is there are lots of countries around the world that have very strict uh, monetary or banking uh, rules. And there are lots of these countries that just simply don't allow for their businesses or citizens of their country to wire out a lot of money out. There's a few countries like, trust me, that just they don't want you as their citizen to wire hundred million dollars and they have banking systems that make sure that doesn't happen. So we have had a few scenarios where the client has a, a, um, a client of their own and that client is in one of these countries where you have let's say hundred million dollars or five hundred million dollars that you want to pay out but the banking system doesn't allow you to pay that money out so what do you do? So here's some uh, common solutions that could work on the scenario. The first thing I would do, if I had a client that has a lot of money stuck in a country that's odd and they can't take the money out, I would ask the client to go to their bank or any of the top banks within the country and find out who's their corresponding bank. And what you want to do is once they put their money in which bank they're working with, uh, let's say HSBC, um, like that, HSBC's corresponding bank in a different country could be Barclays, as an example. And so you wire the money out from HSBC into the corresponding bank, and that's a little bit, that's the most easiest way that I've seen it happen for sure. And we've certainly helped a few clients figure that out. The second uh, easiest uh, way to do this is uh, if you have a client who owes you a lot of money in a country that you can't take the money out like that, is you ask a client to go into a bank that has a, uh, is a uh, is their minimum credit rating is A, uh, like a HSBC or Barclays or one of those top banks. You The client must open up an account in that bank. Then you get the client to issue you a stamp out of credit. What happens is that that money is blocked in the client's bank account. A stamp out of credit gets issued to you in your bank in a different legal jurisdiction. Now, when you get that same amount of credit, you can contact a company like LineCredit.ai or any of our competitors and see who can monetize it at a high LTV for you, uh, who has the expertise like we do or the ability to execute like that. Shop it around and then you go and you monetize the instrument. And that's a second, that's, uh, a, that's a, you know, a way that you can take money out of a country without taking the money out of the, 
country like that. Uh, the third way, uh, I've done one video on the third way, is you look for a multinational company that's in that country, operates in that country, has payroll in that country like that, but this multinational company also has offices in other countries. The example I've used on videos, which is not a good example, but it tells a story, is Facebook. So Facebook could have, let's say, an office in the country that's hard to move money out of, and then they could have an office in the country that you resonate in. And so you contact the CFO of Facebook, and then please, by all means, don't call that. Contact the CFO of Facebook. I'm just giving Facebook as an example. The point is you're contacting a multinational company, and you say, hey, you guys have a, you know, you guys are operating in this country. You know, there's money that I have stuck in this country, and I need this money to come out in this other country and a specific in this bank. And you, uh, Mr. Multinational Company, have offices in all these jurisdictions, have bank accounts in these jurisdictions. Can I give you 100 million, the 100 million that is coming to me, can I give it to you? And you in return give me 80 million, 70 million, 50 million, some number, but they're giving it to you in a different country in a different legal jurisdiction. And by doing it this way, you're losing some amount of your money for sure because the company, the multinational company, there must be a benefit for them to do that for you. So they need to keep some portion of that cash for their for their benefit, if you can say it that way. And, uh, and then you still get the money out. I hope you found this content helpful. If you need any help in this area, please feel free to uh, go to our website, linecred.ai, schedule a consulting call, me or any of my associates, we we'll would be happy to get on the phone with you, help you out with some strategies, some free resources, and more importantly, help you execute. My name is Tamer Zaman. My, my, my team and I look forward to the option of working with you. Thank you. Hey friends, so in this part of the video, I'm gonna talk about the frequently asked questions we get from you, the viewer. Number, number one biggest question, I guess, Tamer, we watch a lot of your videos. Uh, we like to engage your organization in helping us access our ca access capital that uh, traditional banks wouldn't be able to provide to us or help us monetize a banking instrument or help us understand how to go into a private person program. How do we engage you and your team? And the answer is in three specific ways. One, and it's the best way to go to our website, landofcred.ai, and book a consulting call with us. Me or any of our senior associates would be happy to meet with you understand the project, understand the challenges you're, you're uh, dealing with, and help you through it like that. We get a lot of compliments for our ability to execute when others can't with four years of experience and expertise, for sure. The second is you can uh, get a copy of our book, Hypergrowth, How to Connect to Customers and Investors in New Ways. You get access to various investment strategies, how to talk to a banker, how to connect to a customer, how to get your next investor like that. Uh, the third is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll access uh, customer walkthroughs, case studies, strategies, banking instruments, closing of banking procedures, like a lot of stuff that sometimes your own banker wouldn't even know, uh, even know some of, some of these strategies and content, uh, or nor would your chief financial or legal officer like that. So I highly recommend subscribing to our YouTube channel. The second question, I guess, Tamar, when companies are choosing you or LanaCry.ai, why are you guys winning compared to LTF options? In the past, my answer would have been because we provide higher LTV, or when we provide capital, we can provide far more than your bank can, and we cover geographies internationally that perhaps your bank doesn't. In the past two years, uh, what I've really started to discover is the reason a lot of uh, chief legal officers, CEOs, capital companies are choosing us consistently is simply because of our years of experience, our expertise, and our ability to execute. Uh, next question that you usually get is, um, Timo, which customer base do you best serve? Uh, if I was your ideal customer, who am I? The truth is everybody in our team speaks English uh, somewhat fluently. <laughs> and so I like to think that uh, we are best relevant uh, to business owners that are English speaking uh, people around the world have, you must, must, must have some kind of liquidity ready to go minimum of $1 million for sure. You need access to a large amount of capital, whether it's cash, whether you want to monetize a banking instrument or participate in a private placement program. That's the market we typically serve. We operate just like a law firm. So when you contact us, it becomes a billable, a billable hour. And what you're paying for is our, our years of experience, 
our expertise and to really be able to execute on projects that your banker or your chief legal counsel or whoever you work with uh, typically can't uh, can't help you with. Uh, then the next, uh, th this is a funny question, and I get this often. I hear that there's a lot of litigations against some of our competitors, uh, whether it's a private placement program or a, a bank that promised to loan money they didn't, whatever the deal is, and how come we don't have any litigations against us? There's two answers to that. Uh, the first answer, the corporate answer, is that me and our team uh, operate in a very high level of integrity. Uh, we take on projects that we can deliver on, um, like, like all that corporate stuff. Uh, now, there's a truthful answer, and the truthful answer is me within the, as a CEO of Land Credit AI. My vision hasn't been big enough for me to try to disrupt the world, and I fail at that vision because if you look at the largest corporations or the largest brand names in your household, whether you use Google, whether you use uh, drive a Ford car, whether you have tunnel, when you have headache, like that, all a lot of the brand names in your household that you use have gone have have litigations as part of their business. I'll look them up, look at their financial statements. They all have lawsuits against them, and so I feel the fact that we don't have any litigations or we don't have people on social media bad mouthing us or creating drama stories like that is my failure in trying to push the company uh, at, a, at a new height. And, and that's the truthful answer on why we don't have litigations on, against us, uh, <laughs> for sure, as, as of the, uh, the day we're showing this video. The final, final question I do want to answer is, uh, Tamor, we've seen law brokers who have made millions and millions of dollars working with your firm in less than a year. Uh, do you have any kind of a program because I'm interested in becoming an associate or broker within your organization? Uh, the answer is yes. If you go to linecredit.ai, we're always looking for brokers who have experience. Our target brokerage uh, is a broker who has a book of business, who comes from the, from the financial services industry, with retail banking, wealth management, uh, is a former legal attorney like that. Uh, those are the target audiences we like to work with just because what we offer is so niche, so sophisticated, and so wanted. Uh, and it's ideally an institution or a brokerage that has a bunch of agents, and they're looking to provide some advisory services, uh, some banking expertise uh, that they simply don't have right now. Uh, my name is Tamar Zaman. My team and I look forward to the option of working with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot, Temur. Uh, as I mentioned about, uh, we are uh, an investment banking firm based out of Mumbai, and it was a great pleasure to discuss in detail all the possibilities and opportunities which we can do as a cross-borders uh, different projects and programs which we are talking about. And I think a uh, lot of insights, a lot of uh, inputs you had given as a free hands to us, and we are really looking forward to collaborate and work together with you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you.